Yeah, you know, check this out. We don't we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we not even gonna even go there with all due respect, but I appreciate you as a journalist asking. Okay. Thank you. Cause you listen, seven years ago I'd have been like, yo, did you hide somebody to kill Fox? But no, you have to do it like a journalist. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean we wouldn't even get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's no Which sense. you never believed. Bro. Yeah, thank you. Meek Mill reacts to Diddy allegations. So uh, earlier this week, I reported Lil Rod, um, one of the former producers that was working with Diddy. Uh, in the court documents, his lawsuit against Diddy, uh, it's, they started circulating. One of the allegations was that Diddy had sex with a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Immediately, people identified the rapper as Meek Mill. Um, and Meek Mill put his Twitter fingers back to work. We ain't seen him do this in a minute, but th this this stuff got him steaming, y'all. He um. Meek also claimed that the rumor was sparked to shift focus from his new music. And I didn't know that he had a new EP coming out called Heathenism. We're back with new allegations of sexual harassment and assault against Sean Diddy Combs. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer on Combs' latest album, filed a lawsuit Monday. He alleges that Combs sexually harassed and assaulted him while he lived at several of Combs' homes. Hey, 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 gather around everyone. If you've been keeping an eye on P. Diddy's crazy life lately, get ready for even more drama. I mean, we've been through it all. Rumors about him and Tupac, messy breakups with Cassie, and let's not forget those lawsuits. Like when his chef Cindy accused him of assault a few years back, Lil Rod came out recently as well, saying that Diddy made him do some bad things during their work on Diddy's latest album. But hold on to your hats, cause it gets crazier. There were more assault claims and even some revenge videos leaked. Then, in December 2023, another bomb dropped. A woman accused him of mistreating her when she was just 17. We're diving deep into the latest chapter of the P. Diddy saga. It's gonna be one heck of a ride. One of the very first people that was on Diddy's checklist was none other than DaBaby. Yes, you heard that right. Even though he's a youngin' who's been very short on the music scene once compared to Diddy, he nonetheless sparked some interest in Diddy's eyes. And apparently it's not all about business between these two. I was at a party at Diddy Crib in, in L.A. This was uh, the beginning of uh, 2020. Diddy had, he had put everybody else out the crib, like the, the influx of people he had put them out. But he had, he had, uh, he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time, man. It was really, you know what I mean? Like putting his arm around me. Right. So he had put majority of the people out, but he allowed me to stay in there. All right, picture this, it's 2020 and the baby's kicking it at one of Puff's legendary mansion parties. Beyonce and Jay-Z are in the mix. You know, just your typical star-studded bash. It's like stepping into a scene straight out of a Hollywood flick, with celebs everywhere and the energy crackling. But as the night rolls on, things start to get a bit weird. The crowd thins out, and that's when stuff gets real interesting. Day Baby spills the beans on how Puff got a bit too touchy-feely, invading his personal space and pushing some boundaries. He's talking about feeling seriously uncomfortable as Puff starts getting hands-on, even going as far as throwing an arm around him. You can practically hear the tension in DaBaby's voice as he dishes all the juicy details. Imagine you're chilling at this A-list party, rubbing elbows with Beyonce and Jay-Z, when things suddenly take a strange turn. Now, if I were an up-and-coming artist in that situation, I'd be freaking out. And turns out DaBaby was feeling the same vibes especially with all the rumors swirling about Diddy's behavior towards young artists he takes a liking to. I mean, we've all heard about what went down between Diddy and Cassie, right? So, the baby's feeling more than a little uneasy. He paints a picture of the party vibe going from fun and games to straight up awkwardness. With only a handful of folks left in the room, the baby spills the tea on how the place was packed at first, but then Diddy apparently cleared everyone out, leaving just a select few, including Jay-Z and Beyonce. Now, what went down behind those closed doors at Diddy's mansion is still a mystery. But judging by the shaky tone of DaBaby's voice, it wasn't anything good. Fans couldn't help but feel for him at that moment. Now, DaBaby might be just one of the recent guys to be on Diddy's radar. Believe it or not, this has been going on for quite some time. Remember Diddy's connection with Usher or Justin Bieber for that matter? Yep, that's Puffy Flavor Camp for you. So, yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like, we can just hang out, nigga, we gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it and shit, and he's like, right. yo, why don't we, like, go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just said? <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him, because I was like, this nigga, like, fuck it. Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> 
<laughs> and this, is shit, this is shit that goes off. But this is a little fruit pop. Pop is a fruit pop. <laughs> Trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? You should sit out there for no reason. So, let's talk about this whole Diddy getting cozy with the baby situation, huh? Well, if you've been keeping an eye on the music scene, you probably ain't too shocked. Diddy's got a bit of a rep for getting a little too buddy buddy with up and comers. He's been playing the mentor game for a minute now, with stars like Justin Bieber and Usher on his roster. But what really goes down when the doors close? That's the big question mark. Fans have been buzzing like mad. And let me tell you, they're painting a pretty murky picture. Remember what Usher hinted at about Puffy's flavor camp? Yeah, that had folks talking. So imagine this. Usher, the young R&B sensation, lands the opportunity of a lifetime to live with none other than Puff Daddy himself. Yeah, you heard that right. At just 14, Usher's rubbing elbows with hip hop heavyweights like Biggie, Lil' Kim, and Mary J. Blige, all regulars at Puffy's Pad. New York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some. Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to. In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. During a chat with Howard Stern, Usher didn't hold back. He straight up spilled the beans about what went down. And let me tell you, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Usher saw some stuff, man. He got a first-hand look at the lifestyle, the good, the bad, and the downright shocking. But here's the kicker. Diddy wasn't exactly playing the strict mentor role. Nah, he was more like the cool uncle, letting Usher figure things out on his own. Sure, there was a tutor thrown into the mix, but it was like a crash course in the school of hard knocks. And when it came to Usher's debut album, Diddy stepped up as producer. But when it didn't quite hit the mark commercially, suddenly Diddy was MIA for Usher's follow-up album, My Way, which went platinum six times over. But hold on, cause there's more. Gene Deal, a former associate of Diddy's, recently dropped a bombshell, claiming Diddy's intentions with Danity Kane weren't exactly kosher. According to Deal, Diddy had some sketchy plans for the group, including getting them mixed up in some shady stuff. These revelations give us a glimpse into the dark side of the music biz, showing that fame and fortune ain't all glitz and glam. It's a stark reminder that things ain't always what they seem in the world of entertainment, and sometimes the truth ain't pretty. When DaBaby spilled the beans about feeling uneasy at that party, it was like deja vu. I mean, Diddy has a track record, and it ain't exactly squeaky clean. Everyone's wondering what's up with Puff's personal space. Is he just trying to bond? Or is there something sketchy going on? And the baby's not the only one with issues. Young Miami, formerly one of Puff's partners, has been caught up in the drama too. Some folks even speculate that if she's in trouble, it probably leads right back to Puff. Plus, leaked footage of Diddy's reaction to Miami? Let's just say it's not pretty. But hold on tight, because here comes Gina Hewen, a model who used to date Diddy and allegedly went through some seriously messed up stuff. You've heard about Cassie filing a lawsuit against Diddy, right? Well, turns out, she's not the only one facing fallout from dating him. In one interview, Gina spilled the tea on her roller coaster relationship with Diddy. She claims he got violent, leaving her with injuries in a horrifying encounter. And there's more, another incident in Miami that'll make your jaw drop. Talk about drama in the Diddy-verse. But wait, there's more coming from Gina, and her ride with Diddy didn't stop there. She revealed even more jaw-dropping details, from Diddy offering her cash to terminate a pregnancy to another shocking abortion. And Miami's not staying silent either, teaming up with 50 Cent for a documentary exposing Diddy's alleged actions. And that's not all. There's even more drama with a former male escort spilling major tea about his encounters with Diddy and Cassie. Wild stuff, right? But sadly, there's way more victims here, and we're just getting started. It's like we opened up the Pandora box once we started talking about Diddy and his dark side. Back in 2018, this former male escort named Jonathan Adi dropped some major bombshells in a police video, claiming he was practically held captive by Diddy and his ex, Cassie Ventura. Jonathan spilled some serious tea during the interrogation, alleging he had multiple encounters with Diddy and Cassie. And get this, supposedly, there are tapes of these encounters floating around. I got texts from them. I, st I got the text telling me that, you know, keep their name discreet, 
Don't let nobody know, and I won't let anybody know. That's up to them. Again, Gene Deal chimed in on the situation, too. It's all just too wild to wrap your head around. But here's where it gets even crazier. Nobody really knows what happened to Jonathan Adi. Some say he might have passed away, but there's no solid info. Fast forward to now, with Cassie and others accusing Diddy of assault. And it seems like Jonathan's claims are getting a second look. But this drama isn't just recent gossip. Jonathan talked about it back in 2018, long before Diddy's current troubles came to light. Jonathan spilled the beans about getting mixed up in some shady stuff with Diddy's crew, even pointing the finger at Puffy for messing up his escorting gig. And in the interrogation video, he revealed just how messed up his life got after getting involved with Diddy and Cassie. It's all just a whirlwind of chaos, from run-ins with the cops to settling things with Diddy's lawyers. Jonathan even claimed some pretty out there stuff about Diddy and Rick Ross being close and being involved in some dark rituals. It's all pretty intense, and people are torn about whether to believe Jonathan's story or not. Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever he call himself. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boule. The, the Boule is, is a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. And it's the black people. Okay. Uh, I'm from Africa, so I'm not a racist. Okay. okay, you're my brother, so I like black people. Okay. My, my mom, I was raised by an by a African woman in my house, okay? okay? She was just a servant, but she was my, my own. She, you know, took care of me. Right. So I love black people, okay? okay? Um, I had settlement with Sean, okay? He's Donald Trump, okay? Because he used to belong to their side, you understand? He used to belong to that illuminated group that I told you about. With all the recent accusations against Diddy, folks are starting to wonder. There are even rumors that Jonathan might not be around anymore, fueling suspicions that maybe Diddy silenced him. And then we've got Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy, alleging some pretty disturbing stuff. She's really pulling back the curtain on her relationship with Diddy, painting a picture of control, violence, and assault. It's all just too much to handle. Cassie's gone full-on legal on Diddy, taking him to court in New York, claiming he's put his hands on her multiple times. She's even dropped some jaw-dropping stuff, like how she was pressured into getting down and dirty with other guys while Diddy watched. Talk about messed up. In her lawsuit, Cassie's laying it all out, saying Diddy's got a temper like nobody's business and that she's been on the receiving end of some serious beatings. But Diddy's lawyer's not having any of it. He's calling Cassie out, saying she's just after Diddy's cash. And get this. Cassie's been throwing around demands for 30 million bucks, threatening to spill the tea in a tell-all book if she doesn't get her way. But Cassie's lawyers got her back, saying she turned down a hefty payout from Diddy in exchange for keeping her mouth shut. Now here's the kicker. Diddy's caught the eye of the NYPD, getting himself into some hot water. Cassie and Diddy's roller coaster romance ended back in 2018, and she's moved on, tying the knot with Alex Fine and starting a family. But let me tell you, this lawsuit's got some dark stuff in it. Cassie's accusing Diddy of some heavy-duty stuff, like pushing her into situations she never wanted to be in. She's painting Diddy as not just some big shot at her label, but also as someone who's supposed to have her back, only to end up in this twisted, violent mess. According to the legal papers, Diddy pulled out all the stops to control Cassie, like wrecking cars, dangling people off balconies, and even asking her to carry a gun in her purse. And get this, Cassie didn't go to the cops because she was scared of what Diddy might do if she did. But Diddy's singing a different tune, denying everything, of course. The lawsuit goes even deeper, saying Cassie was pretty much held captive by Diddy, enduring years of his violence and messed up demands. And here's where it gets crazier. Diddy allegedly got revenge on Kid Cootie for dating Cassie by blowing up the dude's car. Kid Cootie's even confirmed it. Then, in 2018, Diddy supposedly busted into Cassie's place and assaulted her, leading her to cut ties with him and Bad Boy for good in 2019. Now, the latest allegation that put even more dirt on Diddy's name, if that's even possible at this point, is the one coming from Lil Rod, one of the producers from the music industry. See, Rod and Diddy worked on Diddy's Love album last year, and as it turns out, things got out of control. Lil Rod was allegedly manipulated and assaulted, and now he wants justice for what was done to him. Following Cassie and others, Lil Rod filed a lawsuit himself. Now, with Lil Rod's lawsuit, we finally got to see some real evidence, including photos, recordings, and more. This bombshell lawsuit was dropped on Diddy just when he thought it couldn't be worse for him. 
Rod is suing Diddy for a whopping $30 million, alleging that Diddy not only hurt him, but also threatened him for over a year. In his lawsuit, Lil Rod named a bunch of big names in the entertainment biz, including Diddy's son, some music execs, and even some recording studios. According to him, it's all part of this big racketeering scheme, like something out of a mob movie. Now, Lil Rod's no stranger to the music scene. He's the guy who worked on Diddy's The Love Album Off The Grid back in 2023. But apparently things went way left after Lil Rod signed on for that gig. He claims he was practically living with Diddy, bouncing between his homes in LA, NYC, Miami, and even a yacht in the Virgin Islands. And here's where it gets wild. Lil Rod says Diddy wasn't just his boss. He was like this creepy mentor figure. He alleges that Diddy would grope him, make weird requests, and even try to get him to hook up with other producers. When Lil Rod complained, Diddy's crew just brushed it off like it was no big deal. Lil Rod's lawyer even compared one of Diddy's staff to Ghislaine Maxwell from the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. Yikes. But wait, there's more drama. Lil Rod's claiming that Diddy tried to set him up with other producers, promising him fame and fortune if he played along. And get this, he says Diddy's got some shady footage of people doing who knows what at his crib, possibly caught on hidden cameras. But that's not even the half of it. Lil Rod's alleging some serious stuff, like being forced into stuff by someone close to Young Miami, and even facing assault from Cuba Gooding Jr. And he's got receipts, folks, screenshots, and recordings that supposedly show all this craziness going down. He's got footage of Diddy allegedly serving spiked drinks to underage kids and workers, messing with drugs, and even flashing illegal guns. With all this evidence, it looks like this legal battle's just getting warmed up, and it could have some huge consequences for everyone involved. And then, there's also the famous studio incident with which it all basically started going downhill between Diddy and Rod. You might remember those sketchy rumors about Diddy and his son possibly being involved in a studio shooting a couple of years back? Well, it seems like there might be some truth to it after all. Lil Rod spilled the beans about being at Chalice Recording Studios in LA when things went south on September 12, 2022. He's claiming that Diddy straight up told him to lie to the cops, saying Diddy wasn't involved and that the shooting was just some random drive-by outside the studio. And get this, the victim called G in the lawsuit is supposedly a buddy of Justin Combs, Diddy's son. Not only that, Lil Rod says he still has the clothes he wore that day, all bloodstained from helping out the victim. He even provided screenshots showing the aftermath in the bathroom, where G supposedly got shot by either Diddy or his son. But wait, there's more drama. Lil Rod's alleging that Diddy's chief of staff, Corum, was getting her team to score drugs for Diddy. And that's not all. He claims there's footage of Diddy's son, Christian Combs, allegedly drugging and assaulting a woman. And if that wasn't enough, he's accusing Diddy of planning to use his connection with Bishop T.D. Jakes to clean up his image after Cassie's lawsuit hit him hard. After that, Diddy faced even more assault allegations and had to step down from his role as chairman of Revolt TV, the media company he co-founded back in 2013. Lil Rod, who previously went public on social media asking Diddy to cough up some cash for his work on the album, is now accusing Love Records, Motown, and UMG of cashing in on his hard work. As you would expect, Diddy's lawyer, Sean Holly, is calling Lil Rod out as a straight-up liar, saying he's just after a payday. Holly's saying they've got solid proof that debunks all of Lil Rod's claims and that they're ready to take him on in court. Now let's take a step back and look at how we got here. How did Diddy go from being a big name in the music biz for ages, from winning all the awards, making hit records to being a menace to society? With all the fame comes a heap of controversies, but what Diddy is facing right now is just ridiculous. He's got more legal battles coming up than the Teflon Don. It's this messy backstory that's setting the stage for the chaos Diddy's facing now. Diddy's always been swimming in a pool of drama. It's just now the water's starting to overflow and we're all seeing it. For years, He's been this untouchable figure in the music scene, but behind the scenes, things have been messy. It's like the lid's finally been blown off and all these stories are pouring out. People are speaking up, calling him out for his alleged antics, and it's like we're seeing a whole new side to him. Maybe he thought he could get away with it forever, but now the truth's coming to light and it's causing chaos in his world. Diddy's had one heck of a journey from his early days in hip hop. Starting off as a producer and artist, he built up Bad Boy Entertainment, the label that launched stars like the Notorious Big. 
Ever since Biggie's death, Diddy has been a shady figure, someone to watch out for. Diddy's fighting tooth and nail to clear his name, but insiders say this mistreatment of women's been going on for ages, even back in the early days of Bad Boy. Kirk Burroughs, who co-founded Bad Boy with Diddy, didn't hold back, calling him out for his treatment of women. But Diddy's camp's staying tight-lipped about all that. That is obviously because they are on his payroll. Sean Combs has been a heavyweight in the black music scene since the 90s, making waves with Bad Boy Records and building up a roster of superstars. And he didn't just stick to the shadows. Nope, he made sure he was front and center, racking up hit after hit on the charts. I'll Be Missing You was just one of his many chart toppers, paying tribute to the notorious Big in a way that had everyone talking. And let's not forget his knack for spotting talent, shaping the careers of artists like Machine Gun Kelly and Janelle Monet. Interestingly enough, music is perhaps even not what made him so powerful. It's his wits for business that got him all the power that he's been abusing lately. Diddy's been hustling hard since way back in 98 when he launched his own fashion line, Sean John. By 2016, he made a major payday, selling most of the brand for a sweet $70 million. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Then in 07, he struck gold with Diageo, the big drinks company, promoting Ciroc Vodka and reportedly bagging close to a billion bucks for his efforts. And let's not forget about Revolt TV, the cable network, and multimedia powerhouse he co-founded in 2013. But amid all that success, there's been some serious drama too. Back in 91, chaos broke out at an AIDS fundraiser he organized, leading to nine tragic deaths in a stampede. Then, in 99, he faced assault charges after a run-in with a record exec, Steve Stout. Blood was on his hands since a long, long time ago. And it's not just one or two incidents. Former Bad Boy associates have come forward with their own stories of violence, including accusations of assault against women and business partners. Kirk Burroughs, who was deep in the mix, didn't hold back in his support of Cassie and the other accusers, calling her a hero for standing up to Diddy. Meanwhile, Michelle Joyce and LaJoyce Brookshire, who worked at Bad Boy back in the day, were shocked by the accusations. They remember the fast-paced, high-pressure environment under Diddy, where organizing a lavish white party by Saturday was just another day at the office. And the most recent news that came up in connection to Diddy is that Meek Mill may have also been a victim of Diddy's. Here's the deal. Folks are saying Meek's cozying up to the billionaire squad, not just Diddy, but also Robert Kraft. And guess what? There's talk that Meek might be dabbling in some shady stuff. There's this pic circulating of Meek and Diddy twinning in matching outfits. I mean, seriously? That's not a good look, especially with all the rumors swirling around. And the internet is coming up with new memes and jokes about Meek and Diddy's supposed special bond. Meek has been trying hard to deny all the claims on Twitter. However, the fact that he's answering to all of the comments online only makes him look more guilty and responsible. In conclusion, it's undeniable that Diddy's journey from the heights of success to the depths of controversy has been tumultuous, to say the least. From his rise in the hip-hop scene to his ventures in fashion, television, and beyond, Diddy seemed destined for greatness. However, as allegations of misconduct and abuse continue to surface, tarnishing his once shining reputation, it's a somber reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and influence. Diddy had the opportunity to leave a lasting positive impact on the world, but it's evident that he succumbed to the darker temptations that often accompany fame and fortune. It's truly disheartening to witness how someone with so much potential could allow themselves to become ensnared by greed and corruption, ultimately overshadowing any positive contributions they may have made. As we reflect on Diddy's legacy, it's a sobering reminder of the importance of integrity, humility, and accountability in the face of success. While his achievements in the music industry are undeniable, it's a tragic tale of how unchecked power can lead to the downfall of even the most influential figures. In the end, it's a stark reminder that true greatness is not measured by wealth or fame, but by the impact we have on the lives of others and the legacy we leave behind.